We are in a new series called BC. Pangalawang linggo na natin. Last week, we talked about uh, God becoming man. At sinabi natin BC, ibig sabihin before Christ. Kasi bago pa ipanganak si Kristo, marami ng mga prophecies about Him. As a matter of fact, yung buhay ni, ng Panginoong Jesus natin, yan yung reference point ng timeline ng history natin. BC means before Christ. AD means ano domini or in the year of our Lord. At yung sa gitna niyan, yung reference point is si Jesus. At kailangan pong ma-remind tayo kung ano ang reference point ng buhay ng, ng Pasko natin. Kasi sa kapanahonan ngayon, marami ng mga tao, lalo na sa western, no, sa western part ng hemisphere, na nagsasabing, kahit tanggalin mo na si Jesus sa Christmas, okay lang. Kaya hindi na nila sinasabing Merry Christmas sa ibang part ng world ngayon. Ang sinasabi nila, Happy Holidays or Seasons Greetings. Wala na si Christ. As a matter of fact, hindi lamang po, hindi po bago yan. Meron din pong isang move uh, around the 1800s na nagsasabing, instead of making it BC before Christ and AD in the year of our Lord, gawin na lang nating BCE. Alam yung BCE? Before Common Era. Tapos yung AD, gawin nating CE. Common Era. As a matter of fact, unanood kayo ng Exodus na hindi ko pa napapanood, ano? kasi sabi hindi daw ganun kagan. Kung napanood nyo yung Exodus, ang nakalagay doon, 1,800 BCE. Hindi nila ginamit ang BC. BCE na ginagamit nila. So sabi nila, patanggalin na natin yung before Christ and in the year of our Lord. Para, alam mo yun, hindi, hindi, tayo, ano, hindi tayo masyadong religious. Pero ang nakakatawa doon, pag tinanong mo sila, o sige, anong reference point ng BCE at ng CE? Alam mo yung reference point? Yung buhay pa rin ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So they can change the name, but they cannot change the turning point or reference point. At yan po ang pinag-aaralan natin ngayon na sa buhay natin, even this Christmas, kailangan ang reference point natin si Jesus. At kailangan maintindihan at makita natin, ma-remind tayo ulit ng sobrang pagmamahal niya sa atin. You know, the depth, the height, the width of His great love for us na tayo ay mamuhay ng merong pasasalamat sa Kanya. We will have an attitude of gratitude and not entitlement. Kasi minsan as Christians, we start out with attitude. Tapos, Sa kalauna ng buhay, nagiging entitled na tayo. God, kailangan ibigay mo to sa akin. Nag-serve ako. Pumunta akong sambang gabi, sambang, alam mo yun, tanghali. Ngayon, sambang hapon. Nandito ako. Kailangan i-bless mo ako. Nagbigay ako ng tights ko. Kanina nung nagsabi si babes na magbigay ng tights, nagbigay ako. Lord, i-bless mo ako. Nagkakaroon tayo ng sense of entitlement. Hindi na tayo nagkakaroon ng humility at ng ng attitude of gratitude towards God. So we need to be reminded, ano ba talaga ang reference point ng Christmas? And when we understand His great love for us, babalik tayo doon. Makikita natin na grabe pala yung ginawa ni, ni, ni God. No? Grabe yung ginawa niya. So tiningnan natin yung mga nangyari before Christ. Eto yun. This is that Bible timeline. At yung nandito sa kaliwa, yan ang before Christ. Bago ipinganak si Jesus. Jesus was born around 6 to 4 BC. Okay, not zero. Kasi wala namang zero. Eh. Okay? That's what, we, what, that's what we looked at. And amazing lang, kasi yung mga prophecies about Christ, ang dami. There are more than 300 prophecies about Jesus. And did you know that for eight of those prophecies, more than 300, eight of those prophecies, for that prophecy to be fulfilled in the life of one man, eight lang, the probability is so far off na parang masasabi mo pag nangyari, miracle talaga siya. Ang sabi nga, ng, ang illustration nga dyan ng isang uh, scholar is this. Uh, pumunta ka sa bayan ng Texas, sa, bansa, bayan, sa state ng Texas. Alam nyo ba kung gano'ng kalaki ang Texas? Texas is around 600,000 square kilometers. Alam nyo ba kung gano'ng kalaki ang Pilipinas? Ha? Huh? Alam niyo ba kung gano'ng kalaki yung Pilipinas? More or less. Tama. The Philippines are around 300,000 square kilometers. So, doble. Ang sabi doon, punuin mo ng cookies. Punuin mo ng cookies yung Texas. All around, punuin mo siya ng cookie. 
hanggang two feet deep yung cookie na yun. Lagyan, magbigay ka ng cookie. Tapos kumuha ka ng isang cookie, Oreo, kunin mo yung, yung, ano, yung chocolate, yung puti na lang yung natitira. Tapos you blindfold yourself, itapon mo yun. Tapon mo. Tapos, blindfolded, maglakad ka sa buong area ng Texas. Tapos in one scoop, gumanon ka. Pag nakuha mo yung Oreo cookie na yun na tinapon mo, ganun yung possibility na mag, magiging totoo yung mga prophecies about Jesus. Eight lang po yun. So the probability is, grabe, parang hindi siya mangyayari. But you know how many prophecies Jesus fulfilled in his lifetime? More than 300. Which means this is not the work of man. This is the work of God. More than 300 prophecies. And that's why when we looked at uh, God becoming man last week, we realized this. This is the work of God. That God wants to be intimate with you. That God became man in Christ, that he is not just 100% man, but he's also 100% God. And the gravity, the depth of his love, yung layo ng pinanggalingan niya. Naalala niyo yung aso? Na kahit kayo mahal na mahal niyo yung aso niyo, hindi kayo magiging aso para lang maging malapit sa aso niyo. But God did that for us. He became man so that he can be intimate and personal with us. And today we're going to look at man or God as a shepherd who became the lamb. Pero pag sinabi natin shepherd, hindi tayo masyadong familiar sa shepherd dito. Kasi wala ka naman nakikita mga shepherd dito sa Metro Manila. Kahit nga sa probinsya, hindi tayo masyado. I, and, you know, I grew up, remember I'm not from the Philippines, right? I grew up in Iloilo and I didn't really see shepherds there, you know. Paano ba yung shepherd? Anong ginagawa ng shepherd? The shepherd leads the sheep to pasture. The shepherd takes care of the sheep. The shepherd drives the sheep. Siya ang nag, ano, kung saan pupunta yung sheep kasi siya ang nakakaalam kung saan yung damo. Okay, yung iba sa inyo, yun, nung sinabi kong damo, iba yung naisip. Mga past life, no? Kung saan yung grass, tsaka kung saan yung magandang water. Doon niya nililid, dinadrive niya yun. But not only does he do that, he cares for the sheep. And he doesn't just care for them collectively. Hindi lang naman siya yung nagbabantay na, oh, sige. No, alam niya, individual sheep. Alam niya na itong si Whitey, hindi yan si Fluffy. Ikaw, pag, pag tayo tumihin sa sheep, pare-parehas lang yan. Pero yung shepherd, iba. Alam niya, iba-iba yung sheep na yan. So ang ginagawa niya, every day, you know, parang kikilita, kiki, you know, he's gonna frisk the sheep, okay? Ano niya yan, if he feel niya kung may garapata ba yan, may pilay ba yan, may sugat ba yan, ganun siya. He doesn't just care for the sheep collectively, he, shares, he cares for the sheep individually. Ganun ang shepherd. Ganun ang ginawa ng shepherd. And so the sheep now feels what? Secured. The, the sheep has this peace that whatever happens, I am going to be cared for. No? And sometimes sa Christmas, sa Christmas hustle and bustle, nadadala na lang tayo. Pero there's this inside of us, parang there's something missing, there's something broken. And that's what we're going to, to look at today. At you know what? I just have this, sometimes kasi may mga pagkakataon tayo sa buhay na nararattle tayo. Katulad ng nangyari to sa isang taga Iloilo. True story. Okay? Nagpatingin sa doktor, tapos sabi ng doktor sa kanya, kailangan tanggalin yung butlig mo. So, na-stretch, parang alam mo yun, hindi siya makatulog for one week, tawag siya sa kaibigan niya, pray, pray with me, fast with me, kasi sabi ng doktor, tatanggalin yung butlig ko. So, text sila, tapos finally sabi ng kaibigan niya, bro, meet, meet tayo kasi I'm so worried about you. Ganun. So, nag-meet sila, tapos sabi niya, bakit, bakit ka, takot na takot ka? Kailan ba yung operation na yan? Sabi niya, two weeks from now. Sabi niya, takot na takot ka? Eh kasi tatanggalin yung butlig ko. Eh ano ngayon mo tatanggalin yung butlig mo? Sabi niya, yung buti sana kung right leg lang o left leg, ibutlig. <laughs> so, so minsan may mga nangyayari sa buhay natin that, you know, ops, tama na. Tama na yan, tama na yan, tama na yan. True story yan. May mga nangyayari sa buhay natin na parang nararattle tayo. And when that happens, we have to ask ourselves, ano ba ito? Nadadala na lang ba ako ng, ng, ano, ng, ng season? Ganun ba? Di ba yung season na ang saya-saya pero at the same time, sino sa inyo 
Naku, kailangan ko pang bumili. Hindi pa ako nakabili ng regalo. So, pupunta ka pang Divisoria. Sino na sa inyo nakatry pumunta ang Divisoria December 24? Well, nung ako po ay nagtatrabaho pa sa PAL, sa dahil sa wala akong kaalam-alam, pumunta po ako ng Divisoria December 24, naghahabol po ako ng regalo na ipamimigay sa mga kasamaan ko. Tapos, after that, matagal po ako hindi pumunta sa Divisoria. <laughs> Natroma po ako. Doon po ako nakakaparanas na mag-swimming sa tao. Grabe, grabe po. Sobra talagang. <laughs> Di ba? Tapos minsan, pag mas matangkad pa sila sa'yo, para kang nagsisit. <laughs> Di ba? I think next time, magdadala akong snorkel, no? Or, naranasan natin to. Di ba? Umalis ka, uy, okay pa, may panahon pa. Maaga pa eh, may araw pa. Gabi na, nandun ka pa rin. <laughs> di ba pa? So, stress out, di ba? But sometimes, we just get swept by the moment of the season. Saya na mga tao, sumasaya ka na rin. Mukhang at peace yung mga tao, so at peace ka na rin. Pero pagkatapos ng season, pagdating ng January, kalagitnaan, February, lalo na pagkadating ng January kalagitnaan, bakit? Marireceive mo na po yung bill ng credit card mo. Lahat ng binili mo nung December, ayan na! Di ba? So, may mga pag-aalinlangan na naman. Minsan, alam mo na, oh, sige, December, mag-forgive. So, forgive ka rin. Pero bakit pagdating ng next year, maaari hindi pa kalagitnaan, ayan na naman yung inis mo, ayan na naman yung bitterness mo, ayan na naman yung anger mo, Nadala lang ba tayo sa season? Or baka kasi iba yung nag-drive sa atin. Iba yung nag-lead sa atin. It's just the moment. It's just the season. It's just the bonus. Masaya ka lang kasi andyan yung bonus. Pero pagdating ng January, wala na pong bonus. February. So maghihintay ka na naman ng December para lang fa- parang makumpleto ka. You know, we need a shepherd. We need to follow someone who will not just complete us during Christmas season, but who will give us the wholeness, the peace, the security, even beyond Christmas. So join me as we take a look at this God who became man, this Savior, and the manner by which He saved us so that He can secure us, not just for one year, but even for eternity. In Matthew chapter 2, This is what it says. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the Messiah, where the Messiah was to be born? Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to live, to die, and to rise again for us. We thank you for his birth. We thank you that the child that was given to us, the son that was given was no ordinary child. He is God himself, 100% God, 100% man. And we thank you that he did not come to rule us as a tyrant. He did not come to rule us in, in an abusive power, Lord God. But he came to rule us like a gentle shepherd. And that is what we want to learn today, that we can put our faith and trust in you, not just during Christmas, but even beyond Christmas, all for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So ang setting nito, dumating yung mga Magi, sabi ng mga Magi kay King Herod, yo dude, what's up? Where's the new king? So sabi ni King Herod, tinawag niya yung mga tao niya. Sabi niya, saan ipapanganak yung Messiah? Sabi ng mga chief priests, dito, in Bethlehem in Judea. For this is what the prophet has written. This is what the prophet, it was written a long time ago. That in Bethlehem, you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, a ruler. But what kind of ruler? A ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. See, sometimes we're so afraid, you know, to trust God, to obey God, to follow God, because we feel like, kill joy to si God. No, hindi. We feel like si God talaga naghihintay na magkamali ka. No, hindi ganun si God. He is a gentle shepherd to us. He is a ruler who will lead us as a shepherd, not as a tyrant. Not as a corrupt government official. If you're in the government, 
Remember, this is not you. Okay? Kung nag sa gobyerno ka, hindi ikaw ang corrupt government official. Okay? Pag sabi sa katabi mo, hindi ikaw yan. Okay, para klaro lang. Baka mag-walk out ka. Okay? He will shepherd my people Israel. Kailan sinabi yung prophecy na to? Sinabi to nung time ni Micah. Micah said this prophecy. Micah was, bo- was lived around 700 to 600 BC. This was given more than 700 years before the life of, the life of Christ. This prophecy that the child, the Savior, would be born in Bethlehem was prophesied more than 700 years ago. And ayun yung ano, yung time of the fulfillment of the prophecy. So we're going to look at Micah today and look at the circumstances why God gave that prophecy to them. Last week, we looked at Isaiah and we said that the reason why I, God gave that prophecy to them that the, the virgin will be with child is because he wanted to be a savior to Judah at that time. Okay? When, when Judah was being uh, sieged, no, attacked by two kingdoms, Israel and Syria, Damascus and Samaria. And sabi ni God, I will save you. I'm going to send an army, the Assyrians, to defeat Damascus and Samaria. And, uh, oh yeah, ngayon, eto yung twist. Nung na-defeat na ng mga Assyrians, yung Damascus at Assyria, at yung Samaria, guess what? Anong ginawa ng Assyrians? Judah naman ngayon gusto nilang kunin. Okay, so pans- isipin nyo to. Parang ganito yan. Sabi ni God, sabi ni God sa atin, huwag kayong ma- mabahala Pilipinas. Kasi, um, yung history lang ha, history lang natin. Halimbawa, sabi na yung, yung Spain tsaka yung Japan nagkokon, nagkokonive, atakihin tayo. Sabi ni God, huwag kayong magpapa, mag, mani, mag, mag-alala. Ipapadala ko yung Amerika para talunin yun. Ang problema, nung natalo yun ng Amerika, sabi ng Amerika, ha ha, kukunin kita. Akin ka. So, ma- Lord, nagpadala ka ng Savior. Kami naman ngayon yung... T- Di ba? Eh, mas malakas to kaysa sa dati. Dating set, mas malakas sila. So, sabi ni, ni, ni God, kay Micah, God assured them. He said, but you, O Bethlehem, though you are small in the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, come for me, one who will rule over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. It just confirms that this is God Himself, from ancient times, from eternity. This is no ordinary man. The prophecy. Okay. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she is in labor and bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. Micah is also a book about Israel's rebellion or Judah's rebellion. It's about their punishment and it's about their restoration. And this particular chapter, restoration na po ito mga kapatid. God promises restoration. Ang ganda ni God, ano? Na kahit ang tigas ng ulo natin, kahit tayo yung lihis ng lihis, sabi ni God, i-restore ko kayo. Ibabalik ko kayo sa sarili ko. And so he said, he will stand. Okay, this ruler will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they will live securely for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. This shepherd, this ruler, this savior that God will send is someone who will what? who will have the unction. To stand means to arise. Kung baga, nung pinadala ni God si Jesus, hindi yung nag-alin lang si Jesus na, sige na nga. Sige na nga, save ko na nga. Wala naman akong gagawin ngayon. Di ba? Ay, I'm boring dito sa heaven. Makababa nga sa earth. Parang ganun. Hindi ganun si, hindi ganun si Jesus. Parang, wala magawa sa heaven. Ha? Sige na nga, punta na nga akong earth. Hindi ganun. May, may ano si, si, si Jesus. This shepherd will stand, will arise. He will have this urgency. He will have this desire. He will have this willingness to shepherd you and me. Hindi siya napipilitan. Hindi siya yung parang, ilang mga magulang ba dito? Pag magulo yung anak mo, at kasama mo yung misis mo, di ba magulo yung anak mo? Nasa mall kayo. Sabi mo na sa misis mo, yung anak mo, yung anak mo. Ilan na maka-experience nun? 
yung, yung anak mo ayusin mo, ayun yung anak mo. Di ba? Parang wala ng urgency na anak mo na yan kasi naglolo ko na. Pero nung tap sa klase, ang galing, anak ko talaga yan. Talaga naman. Manang-mana ka sa akin, anak. Pero pag magulo na, yung anak mo, yung anak mo. Okay? One time, yung anak kong elder, older, yung eldest, magulo siya sa, ano, sa, sa grocery. Hindi ko kasama yung misis ko. So ang ginawa ko, bigla akong sumigaw. Sabi ko, excuse me, whose son is this? Gulat siya. So pumunta siya sa akin, sabi niya, I'm your son. <laughs> Niloko ko siya, yung gulo niya eh, di ba? So nagtanong ko, kanino anak to? Parang ganon. But this, this shepherd will have the willingness and the urgency to stand his ground for you and me. Kung baga, kahit matigas ulo mo, andun pa rin siya para sa'yo. Okay, and here's, here's what kind of shepherd he is. We're going to look at anong klaseng shepherd siya at ano yung result because that's the kind of shepherd he is. He is a shepherd who will have the strength of the Lord. He will have the might and the power of God. He will be almighty. He will be able to do what he says. Because of his power, because of his strength, he will be able to shepherd you properly. Hindi siya yung nagsasabing, akong bahala sa'yo. Naalala niyo ba nung nasa school kayo, binubuli kayo? Tapos mayroon ko nga isang kaibigan na sinabi sa'yo, Brad, akong bahala sa'yo. Kaya lang nakita mo rin siyang binugbog. So parang ha, kung bahala sa akin, eh, sinong bahala sa'yo? Ganun, walang power. Kung maga puro dada. Si God hindi ganun. Pag sinabi ni God, akong bahala sa'yo, He can back it up with His power. He can back it up with His strength. Diba? Naalala ko nung mga ngayong, ngayong December, no? talagang lumalaki yung mga muscles natin. Yung mga biceps, triceps, forceps natin. Talagang. But God, is a God of power. This shepherd is a shepherd who will shepherd us in the strength of the, the Lord. But not only that, see, there are so many people, experience natin, who are in power. But when they do have power, instead of shepherding us, what do they do? They abuse us. But this shepherd, this ruler, is one who will shepherd you, not just in the power of God, but in the majesty of His name, which means the exaltation of the name of God, the glory of His name, the character of God is in Him. That when He says He's gonna do it, He's gonna do it. That when He gives a promise, He is also the promise keeper. Not just the promise giver, but the promise keeper. Ganun siyang klaseng sheep. That when He says, I'm going to take care of you and I want to bless you, that is really His heart. Hindi siya yung tipong, Lalo na ngayong Christmas, di ba? Uy, magkita naman tayo. Oh, sige, sige, kita tayo. Di ba, bibigyan pa kayo ngakit. Uy, yung inaanak ko, inang taon na nga ba yung inaanak ko? Ay, sige. Paalala mo sa akin yung gift na bibigay ko, ha? Ilang beses ka na pinaalala? Hindi mo inaalala. Di ba, minsan ganun tayo? Gusto natin, pero wala tayong kakayahan. Eto, gusto niya, May kakayahan siya, and because of his character, because he wants to exalt the name, the majesty of the name of God, he will surely do it in righteousness. That's the kind of shepherd that we have. A shepherd of power, a shepherd of character. What is the result of that? The result is we will live securely. Hindi ka na mag, ma, hindi ka, hindi ka ma, alam mo yun, hindi ka mararatal. Sabi man ng doktor na tatanggalin na yung butlig mo, hindi ka parang, Sige God, shepherd ka eh. Mapilayan man ako, magkasakit man ako, nandun ka para sa akin. You are secure. You know that it's not about the economy that He will shepherd you. It's not about whether you read your Bible this morning. It's not about sumama ka ba ng sambang gabi kanina. You just know that He is steadfast because of His greatness. Not your greatness. Not victory's greatness. He is steadfast because of His greatness. At ang kagandahan nito mga kapatid, alam naman natin si God, 
God never changes. He will not change his mind. He will not change his mind to love you. He will not change his mind to show mercy on you. He will not change his mind to have this desire to bless you. Ganun siya. Kaya secure ka. Para kang nakasan, more than, more than kang nakasandal sa pader. Di ba? Hindi to yung, di ba sabi kanina ni Pastor Jeff, ano ba yung ina-adore mo? Ano ba yung nagda-drive sa'yo? Pag pera, di ba? Okay naman yan, siguro. Okay naman na may pera ka. Pero secure, nakita naman natin in the past, isang bagsak lang ng market sa US, sa Europe, pati tayo apektado. So it's not a good, wala tayong security doon. But this shepherd, he is steadfast because of his greatness. So recap lang natin, Jesus is our shepherd. And the kind of shepherd he is, he shepherds us with power and with character. And the result is that we can live secure. We can be in a stable rock because of Christ. We can live secure. But wait, there's more because Micah said this, he will be your peace. Remember Assyria? And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortress. As a matter of fact, just to give you a, uh, a uh, you know, history about it, the Assyrians did come to Judah and they sieged them. And the Assyrian commander said this, are you relying on your God? Sige nga, sabihin mo nga sa akin, yung mga cities na kinongker namin, yung mga Diyos ba nila, nakayanan kami, sabi ng mga Assyrians. Do you really think that your God is able to stop us? That's what the Assyrians said. But the, the people of Judah kept on hanging on to their, to their God, their shepherd. You know what happened? Less than two weeks or less than a month after the commander said that, his whole army was wiped out. You know how they died? God simply sent an angel. Isang angel lang katapat, mga kapatid. Thousands are dead. That's when the people understood this. God is our peace. He does not just give us peace. He is our peace. And we, we, when we say peace, usually pagka, pagkaintindi natin ng peace, di ba yung external peace? And that's great because God did give them external peace. But you know what God wants to give? A peace that is lasting. Ngayong Christmas, usually, usually I don't, in, hindi ko pa narinig yung news na to, pero usually every Christmas, the military and the NPAs have their ceasefire, tama? And it will last until usually New Year. Pagkatapos nun, bakbakan na naman, ambush na naman. Ganun ang mangyayari. Actually, may nangyayari nung World War II during the war of uh, 1914. It was Christmas Day, and because of the trench war, I don't know if you understand the trench war. Ang trench war is nag, nag-dig sila ng trench, ng malalim na kanal, dito sa side na to, yung mga allies, sa kabilang side, yung mga Germans. Di ba? So, nagkakarinigan sila. Minsan, pag, pag uh, nag, nagbabarilan sila, maglalagay sila ng placard. Sasabihin nila, you missed me, nye, 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 nye. Ganun sila kalapit. So during this Christmas Eve, nagkantahan yung mga Germans because the Germans celebrate Christmas Eve more. The, the French and the English celebrate on Christmas Day. During Christmas Eve, nagkantahan yung mga Germans. Silent night, Hal Hitler. Ho, oh, and they wala pa si Hitler nun. Okay. Silent night, holy night, like the titan, titan. Ganun. So nagkantahan sila. So narinig to ng mga allies. Kumanta na rin sila. Tapos nagsabi yung nung yung mga Germans na, you know, meet us halfway. Pumunta si yung mga Germans, walang rifles dun sa, sa battlefield. Pumunta din yung mga, yung mga allies. Nag-exchange gifts sila, cigarettes, puddings, cake, wine, chocolates, sausages. Totoo po ito nangyari. Of course, this did, did, not, did not happen in the whole army. There are only pockets of areas where this happened. But it showed that even during Christmas, in a time of war, there can be peace. Ang problema po, two days after, nagbarila na sila ulit. Because the peace was not lasting. But the peace that God gives us is eternal peace that goes well beyond Christmas. 
Not just before, not just during, but even beyond Christmas. And not only that, God wants to give us also another kind of peace, a peace that is from within. Diba na, kahit alam mo na, Lord, sabi ng company ko, may bonus kami ngayon, hindi pa dumarating. Alam mo lang, you're at peace. Ito yung sinasabi ni Paul na, the peace that is beyond understanding. Na may sakit ka, you pray to God in thanksgiving, may sakit ka pa rin, but you're still at peace. Diba, nag-away kayo ng asawa mo, you pray to God na magka-reconcile kayo, galit pa rin siya sa'yo, pero you're still at peace. Because you know that God is in control. You know that the shepherd loves you and will take care of you. Will take care of your marriage. So, this internal peace is depicted in this painting. No, nagkaroon ng, 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 ano, ng contest about paint peace. So, nagkaroon ng painting about tranquility, calmness of the sea, the birds in the sky. Pero ang nanalo, eto. Sabi nung, bakit eto yung nanalo? Because this painting depicted that in the midst of the storm and the rushing waters and the lightning and the wind, there is peace. In, in the rock, merong bird na may nest, dun siya na, na, na mahay. And the bird just looks so at peace. Because the bird understood, it is not the externals. It is where you put your footing on. Sino ba yung rock natin? Sino yung shepherd natin? That's the one that's gonna give us internal peace. Kasi kung pera, mag-fluctuate lang yung market. <laughs> Di ba? Relationship naman. Minsan, tumingin lang sa iba, parang, hindi, ma- hindi ba ako mahal niyan? Di ba? Tumingin lang sa salamin yung ano mo. Ako pa rin ba? Yung mga ganun. So, it's really the eternal and the internal peace that God wants to give. And you know how He did this? Ito yung kasi matindi. Sa, sa atin kasi, sa pagkakit, pagkakal, as we know, this is how we know peace, okay? Peace is, there's no war. You know in ancient times, the idea of peace, peace can only happen when somebody surrenders. Peace can only happen when there's subjugation. Kaya nga sabi ng mga Assyrians, you know, surrender to us so that you will not be harmed. We, you will live in safety, sabi nila. Surrender to us and you will live in safety. Once you surrender, there will be peace. Yun yung pagkakaintindi ng mga ancient people and even the Romans during the time of Jesus. That the only way for us to have peace is either you defeat me or I defeat you. And how did God give us this internal and eternal peace? This security as a shepherd. At dito na dumarating yung the shepherd who became a lamb. Because even if God defeats all the enemies, even if God gives you all the money, gives you the house that you need, the family that you long for, even if that happens, there is still a war that you will not win. And it is the war from the inside. That is the war with sin. And that war with sin, only God can defeat it. And the only way He defeated it is to be a sacrifice for us, to be a lamb for us. The shepherd who leads the lamb, who takes care of the sheep, now became the lamb himself for the sacrifice so that you and me can have this eternal and internal peace. The next day in the book of John, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But you know what? Sometimes, nag-alin lang tayo sumunod kay Jesus. Kasi feeling natin, He's the Lamb of God who's going to take away my career, my relationship, my possession, tights na naman, my freedom, my happiness. Di mo, pag sumunod ako kay Jesus, ang daming restrictions. Bawal ng ganito, bawal gumanyan. Aba, may nakita ba kayo sa bulletin board natin dito na puro bawal? Wala naman, di ba? Feeling natin, pag sumunod ako kay Jesus, you know, yung freedom ko mawawala. Yung relationship ko, ta- aalisin ni Jesus yung relationship ko. Guapo naman siya eh. Guapo siya eh. Godly ba siya? Hindi pa. Pero kasi pwede pa yung maging godly yung guapo. Yung godly kasi mahirap nang maging guapo. <laughs> Di ba? Minsan iba, anong pipili mo? Godly o guapo? Eh, yung guapo pwede pa maging godly. Yung godly medyo ayan na yan eh. Anong magagawa natin yan? So minsan, nag-aalinlangan tayo, God. Bibigay ko ba sa'yo yung trust ko? 
Susundin ba kita as my shepherd? But you know what? All these things, these career relationships, your freedom, your happiness, enjoyment, guess what? God is the one who gives it to you. Isa lang ang hindi binigay ni God sa'yo. Sin. At yan ang gusto niyang kunin sa'yo. Sometimes we feel like, hindi gusto niyang pagsumunod ako sa kanya, halisin niya yung karir ko. Ano ba yung karir mo? Karna. Pero di ba ka papalitan niya? Okay? Nang something better. E yung relationship ko, bakit ano ba? Live-in kami ngayon? Oh. Sumunod ka sa kanya, pakasal kayo. Hindi pa ako sigurado yun. O di sumunod ka sa kanya, wala muna kayo. E ano mangyayari sa kanya? Baka siya eh. You know what? Ito rin masa. After being married, with the, the story that God has given me with my wife, you follow God, and God will move heaven and earth to give you the woman that He has prepared for you. If you're a man. Okay? <laughs> Klaruhin po natin. Klaruhin natin. Okay? And He will give you the man that He has prepared for you. If you are a woman. Okay. Klaruhin lang natin. Diba? Parang, oh, He's gonna give me the man. Okay. Uh, hindi yon. Okay. He is the Lamb who takes away sin. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God, paano yung pera ko? Don't be afraid. God will take care of you. The only thing that God wants from you is sin because that's the thing that will destroy you, that will not give you peace and security. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That is how he became a lamb. When he himself laid down his life, the good shepherd who has the power, the character, who has given us security and peace. Ano pa yung response natin sa kanya? I hope, you know, as we are reminded by the magnitude of the love of God, that not only did he become God, he's not only is he a God who became man, but the manner by which he saved us, the gruesome death of the lamb, I hope our response is this. I'm going to listen to the shepherd. I'm going to listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. And when you hear God, most of the time, he's what he's going to say to you. I love you, my child. I love you. Follow me because I have the best for you. We always say this, you know. Sinasabi pa natin sa rin God has great plans for me, plans to, to give me hope in the future, not to harm me. But are we listening to his voice? Are we listening to him? Pag sinasabi niya sa atin na, stop, Wag muna. Wag muna yung relationship. Bata ka pa. Grade 3 ka pa lang, anak. Are we? Sana naman, ano? Wala. Listen to his voice. And most of the time, you're going to hear encouragement. Kahit mali ka. Alam mo yung marinig mo? Anak, balik ka sa akin. Kahit tingkas ng ulo mo. Anak, halika rito. Ganun ang marinig mo kay God. Anak, you don't need to perform for me to love you. See, as Christians, sometimes we start out with the grace of God and end up trying to earn God's love. When if you just listen to His voice, He will set you free. He will remove the burden from you because He is the shepherd who will carry you. God doesn't need to be carried. God is the one who's going to carry you. Know His person, not just His works, Know his person. Know his character. Kaya minsan nahirapan ka mag-trust kasi hindi mo kilala yung character ni God eh. Ako, baka ano si God? Baka killjoy. Ilan ba, ta- ilan ba sa atin, lumaki tayo sa kultura na parang tingin natin killjoy si God? Ako lang? Ay, kayo na mag-preach dito. Diba? Know his person. Ano ba talaga to? Ano, sino ba talaga si God? Si Jesus? Ano ba yung gusto niya talaga? Don't just hear about him, get to know him. And of course, follow his lead because he will always lead you to the Father. He will always lead you in green pasture. He will always lead you in quiet waters. He will always lead you to his presence. And you know what? As you follow his lead, guess what? 
time will come, you will also be leading others to follow Him. At ganun po, when we say we are secure and we are peaceful, it doesn't mean that we wala tayong pakialam sa iba. Ilan sa inyo, you want your family to worship God and to honor God. Follow His lead. Kaya minsan hindi nakikita sa atin, ay, anak, kresyano ka na ba? Oo, mami, 10 years na, ano ka ba? <laughs> ah, totoo. Bakit? Eh, kasi kahit sinabi natin kresyano tayo, sa iba pa rin tayo nakatingin as a shepherd. So my question to you is this. Having this kind of shepherd, Jesus who already became a lamb for us, will you not at least man lang, pag-isipan nyo, kung hindi pa, will you not follow Him and be, and make Him your shepherd? Father, we thank you, God, that your grace abounds in us. It's amazing, Lord, that you would become like us and the manner by which you saved us, God, that you had to die, that Jesus had to die to be the lamb for us. Paul said this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, can you imagine that? He knew what was going to happen, but He gave thanks. When He had given thanks, He broke the bread and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, He took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant. The new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And today we remember, and not just during Christmas season, but even beyond Christmas. God, we thank you that because of the body that was broken on the cross, your word says that we are healed. And so we receive that healing, God. But most of us here, more than physical healing, we need emotional healing. And so I just pray, Lord, heal them, Lord, from bitterness. Heal them from anger from fear, from depression, Lord God. Heal us, God, from despair and doubt in the name of Jesus, that we would listen to you and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the bread. Lord, we thank you that by the shed blood of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. The greatest battle that we can never, ever win has been won for us. And the only thing we need to do is surrender to Christ. God, give us the grace that every day we will surrender it all. And we will have the peace and the security that is beyond understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the Lord's cup. Hallelujah. Father, God, I just pray for the families that are here and even for our families. God, we just declare that we look forward to the day when we will see them worshiping you with us. We look forward to that day, Lord God, that they too will have this peace that is beyond understanding, the eternal peace and the internal peace. God, I pray for those who have, I just feel like some of you here, you have this great challenge. Some of you have may mga court cases kayo. I just pray Father God that you would just give them the peace that you are in control in the name of Jesus. For some of us it seems like our marriages seems like there's so much strain but God thank you for the peace that you are in control that when we listen to your voice and we do your will, you will heal our marriages. God, thank you, Lord, that even our children and our children's children will benefit because our shepherd became a lamb. But now, you are exalted. And so we honor you. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.